Welcome to the second part of our presentation on the importance of poultry and poultry products. This presentation shall discuss the direct and the indirect contribution of poultry industry in research purposes, its contribution as a source of income, as a source of employment, and its role in environmental and ecological balance. One of the contribution of poultry in the field of science is that it can be used for research purposes. So why are chickens used in research? Chickens are used in research because chickens have been domesticated for such a long time. There is a lot of information available on their physiology, which is very useful for researchers. Chickens lay eggs, which means that their embryos develop outside the mother's body. This allows researchers to monitor the development of the chick at every stage, including development of the nervous system, limb development, and cell migration. Access to the embryo during development means that experiments involving surgical manipulation and chemicals which change the process of development are possible. Since studying the development of mammals is such a difficult process, the insights from these studies often provide useful comparative information. Since chickens are vertebrates, their developmental processes have a great deal in common with humans, despite many differences. They have provided valuable insights into the development of the nervous system, showing how cells migrate and differentiate. They have also been used to discover the molecular basis of limb development, a process which is similar in humans and birds, and have helped the understanding of many limb disorders. Chickens are also highly susceptible to infectious diseases, some of which also infect humans, such as influenza. By understanding the immune system of the chicken, we can learn valuable information for prevention of pandemic outbreaks of flu. In research, the first cancer-causing virus, the Rosercomal virus, or the RSV, was identified in chickens. In cancer, the cells grow and multiply beyond normal limits. In the year 1910, Peyton Ross extracted material from a cancer tumor in a hen and injected it into a healthy chicken. The chicken developed cancer and he concluded that the cells from the hen's tumor contained an infectious substance, a virus that transmits cancer. However, the study could not be replicated in mammals and was long overlooked. When research, was show, research showed that the viruses can operate by affecting the genetic material of normal cells, interest in Peyton's Roos discovery was reignited. So we have here the Roos sarcoma virus story, which was first uh, experimented by Peyton Ross in the year 1910. So we have here a chicken with the sarcoma in the breast muscle. The sarcoma is a type of cancer. The researchers removed the sarcoma and broke, up, broke it up into small chunks of tissue. Then it was ground up a sarcoma with sand. They collected a filtrate that has passed through fine pore filter and the filtrate was injected into young chicken and the Researchers observed the development of sarcoma in the injected chicken. So this was Peyton Ross at his microscope in the year 1923, now at the age of 44, in his Rockefeller Institute laboratory. Scientists who studied the Roos sarcoma virus have been awarded the Nobel Prize three times. First is uh, Peyton Ross, he was awarded the 1966 Nobel Prize for the discovery of the Roos sarcoma virus. Second, Howard Temin and David Baltimore, which is not shown, 
shared the 1975 Nobel Prize for their discovery of reverse transcriptase. And third, Michael Bishop and Harold Varmos shared the 1989 Nobel Prize for their discovery of the SRC oncogene. Another contribution of chickens in the field of research is that the molecular basis of limb development was found in chickens. The chicken is an excellent model organism for studying vertebrate limb development, mainly because of the ease of manipulating the developing limb in vivo. Classical, limb, classical chicken embryology has provided fate maps and elucidated the cell-to-cell -cell interactions that specify limb pattern. The first defined chemicals that can mimic one of these interactions was discovered by experiments on developing chick limbs and over the last 15 years or so, the role of an increasing number of developmentally important genes has been uncovered. The principles that underlie limb development in chickens are applicable to other vertebrates and there are growing links with clinical genetics. Another contribution is that chickens highlighted the importance of the antibiotic streptomycin. Some vaccines are also made from eggs. So this diagram shows the workflow for an egg-based vaccine. The production of egg-based vaccines, which have been the mainstay of influenza uh, vaccine prevention, are commonly grown in the allantoic cavity of the embryonated hen eggs. It involves the following processes, beginning with the identification of the predicted virus strain. A strain will be selected and segments will be reassorted into an egg-adapted virus. Once these viruses are generated, they will be injected into the eggs as shown in, uh, in the figure in number two and screened to isolate the candidate vaccine viruses or the CVVs. The CVVs will then be mass produced by vaccine manufacturers using SPF or the specific free pathogen X allowing them to replicate inside. As a final step in vaccine production, the allantoic fluid of the egg will be purified. And this, uh, this uh, diagram here represents this process. Scientists in the US started exploring the use of eggs in vaccine production in the year 1930s. Researchers in England conducted the first trials on their armed forces in 1937 and the year after the U.S. found it could protect its military with a flu shot. A working egg-based vaccine was ready for the U.S. public by the year 1940s. This diagram shows a laboratory technician injecting influenza virus into the hen's eggs during vaccine research at the Toilap Institute of Virology in Serbia on March 3, 2020. We also have here a diagram showing how the U.S. makes flu vaccines from chicken eggs. So the first step in the making of the flu vaccines from eggs include the government health agencies sending virus strains to vaccine manufacturers. Then the virus will be injected in the fertilized hen's eggs where it incubates and replicates. Then the scientists harvest the fluid containing the virus from the egg. They kill the virus so it cannot cause disease and they purify the virus antigen. After that, the antigen will be used to create the vaccine. The antigen is the crucial element of the process. It, it is a substance released by the virus that triggers the immune system to respond. After that, the vaccine will be tested and approved by the Food and Drug Administration. So the entire process from the arrival of the egg 
to the publicly available vaccine takes at least six months according to the CDC. Another important contribution of poultry, particularly chickens in the field of research, is the chicken genome sequence. So when we say genome, that is uh, in the field of molecular biology and genetics, that is uh, all the genetic information of an organism, it is the entire set of genetic instructions found in the cell. So the chicken, the chicken genome was the first uh, bird genome sequence in the year 2004. So as published in the nature.com, so after completing the work on mapping chicken genome sequence uh, and chicken genome variation, two international research consortiums have been uh, significant, have made significant progress in reading the maps, shedding new light on the studies into the first bird as well as the first agricultural animal that has its genome sequenced and analyzed. So after a carefully uh, genomic comparison between chicken and organisms that have already been sequenced, the International Chicken Sequence Sequencing Consortium discovered that although the chicken genome contains uh, less DNA, it has about the same number of genes and about 60% of chicken genes correspond to a similar human gene. Researchers also identified a chicken counterpart to an important human immune system protein, revised scientist assessment of the chicken's sense of smell, and suggested that the chickens may provide a good model for studying changes in DNA linked to aging and depth. So other findings from the analysis include the identification of genes that affirm the chicken's value as a model for study of developmental disorders like cleft palate and diseases like muscular dystrophy. So among the benefits of the Chicken Genome Project include its potential for uh, further studies in the field of genetics and molecular biology, its potential for research on health and for the improvement of breeding, particularly in poultry. So we have here a diagram showing the comparative map of the chicken and the human genes. So another discovery from the Chicken Genome Project is that the chickens and the humans have a similar number of genes for olfactory receptors, suggesting that chicken's sense of smell is much greater than previously thought. Another important um, contribution of poultry is that it can be a source of income. So poultry rearing and poultry farming is a good is considered to be a good source of income. So according to FAO in the year 2012, agriculture, which is made up of four subsectors, such as the crops, livestock, poultry, and fisheries is the main source of livelihood for 25 to 30 percent of the labor force in the Philippines. It contributes about 10 percent of the gross national product or, or the GNP. Poultry is also important for its contribution to the economy. According to a report by the Department of Agriculture in the year 2021, the poultry subsector remains a major bright spot for spurring agriculture growth on 2021 for a target of 2%. Poultry production accounts for 13% of agriculture gross value added for the GVA and dressed chicken production in the Philippines surged 40% between 2009 and 2018 increasing from a million metric tons to 1.4 million. According to Secretary Dar, the Department of Agriculture instituted an expanded poultry production and livelihood program with an initial investment of 337 million as part of the National Livestock Program. The total value 
for the total volume of chicken production in the year 2020 was 1.81 million metric tons in live weight. Another important uh, contribution of poultry is that it can be a source of income. So this diagram shows a woman from India feeding the chicken birds with household waste. So village women can earn extra cash by selling poultry and poultry products. Another is that poultry has, uh, in terms of its return, it has a quick return and relatively low investment required, especially for backyard poultry. Poultry is also a source of employment, so rural women can save their extra time through family poultry farming. Poultry farming can create additional income opportunity to increase the family income. And marketing of poultry and poultry products also create a source of employment. Poultry farming can also help in alleviating poverty through creating employment opportunity for illiterate and illiterate unemployed youth and old people. Poultry is also important for its role in environmental and ecological balance. Poultry manure helps in maintaining the soil fertility and poultry helps in keeping ecological balance through eating different insects, worms, and household waste.